started off as an artist, making paintings, and then I didn't know where that was going or if I was even good at it, because I feel like I was an 8 out of 10 at it, and to, the difference between being an 8 out of 10 and a 9 or a 10 is massive. And so I wasn't good enough to be an artist to paint or a painter or an illustrator to make a career out of it early on. So I, I kept pushing it. I went, okay, what can I do then that I like? So I was making cartoons and that that didn't quite work because everyone else had those jobs and I was sort of getting somewhere with it but not getting anywhere at all with it. And so I pushed into writing poetry and that I sort of got somewhere with that. It was connecting a bit more than my other stuff. And but still that that felt like a whole environment that just just was very pol political in in the true sense of the word like in the the macro country sense of the word it was very extremely left. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm I'm more interested in the politics of the heart as dumb as that sounds and probably naive and and so then I felt like there was there were fat there was fashions in poetry and if you wrote about certain things and themes then you were going to get published and you were going to win awards or you were going to do that sort of stuff and I I got somewhere with it I did get some runners up in some competitions and but I sort of felt like I was still not writing stuff that I wanted to and then Poetry turned into rants, um, video rants, just because I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to keep trying something different. So I love how one, just pushing one creative thing into the next, to the next, to the next, just to see what connects. And I know maybe connection isn't the, the ultimate thing in, in any sort of creative act. The, the creative act is in, is in itself a prize to oneself. But I love the idea of connect. Early on in my life, I felt like I was just a fucking weirdo and and people just spoke condescendingly to me and I felt like an idiot. But I, I felt like I, I could tap into some sort of magic that other people weren't seeing. And there were other people like me who could tap into magic that they that other people couldn't see either. But we were all separated and we didn't have... We didn't know there were other people like us. And so I've even found that more recently, like connecting with old school friends who I used to play sport with. And I can feel how completely different we are and how I know they've sort of gone through life and ticked all the right boxes and done the correct things that we were sort of all brought up to, to do. And as much as I respect them for doing what they've done, I still feel, I almost regress. I'm 48 now, but when I talk to some of some old school friends who I haven't talked into for years I, all of a sudden I feel like I'm 15 again and I'm that weird dude who who had who just had stupid crazy thoughts and in some ways when my thoughts connect I feel like there's there's a validation that it, there is beautiful magic and, it, and I'm allowed to talk to it without getting some talk about it without getting some sort of side eye and it does it, it does kind of weirdly validate my weirdness as superficial as as that is but I stuck with it through all those all of those deserts of of side eye <laughs> I get for a lot so long through through corporate jobs and warehouse jobs it was actually the people in warehouse jobs getting paid less that understood my creativity better and I understood theirs better than people in in corporate and stuff like that because then everyone every, people in those sorts of jobs um yeah <laughs> they, they, yeah they they're definitely there for the money but i love how it's taken me 18 to 48 30 years to sort of sort of sort of find an, a group my group of people an audience or friends who i've met through my art in the last five six seven years there's a great line from True Detective, and I think Matt McGonaghy delivers it. And he says, I know who I am, and after all these years, there's a victory in that. That's a line from like 10 years ago when the first True Detective came out. And that, and that, that line, amongst many lines in that first season, really resonated with me. I know 
winning and losing sounds a, a bit wanky, but it's true that there is a victory in in finally knowing knowing who you are and a, a conviction in this and connection out external validation as dumb as that is did did count towards this in in some ways but i i stuck with i stuck with being my strange weird self without any external validation for years and years because i had no choice it doesn't feel like it's a it, do, it doesn't feel like a choice like you can you can fit in but then something in you suffocates and i remember being my first job at maya when I was 18, 19 and crying on the work toilets at the end of the day after pretending to be a person that I wasn't in retail. And because I remember in retail, other some people would say, a friend of mine at the time, a friend in inverted commas, he said, he said to someone else, don't worry, it's just Darby being Darby. Because I'd say weird shit. And I, I kind of, I had a weird upbringing where I almost didn't know the art of conversation, so I'd say I'd say weird stuff because I was brought up with a crazy mum, who's dead now. But she she had a re- yeah really strange outlook, which is great because it's given me given me some interesting, given me an in- an interesting worldview. But also, she just really, while she was very clever and was a barrister and all that shit and could argue her pants off because she was fucking Irish and clever. She also didn't know how to have a normal conversation without just coming across as what the f- what the fuck what the fuck are you talking about? And even even my little stupid video rants are what the sometimes I think what the fuck am I on about? And people will mirror that back like people who don't follow me will make in the comments what what's this guy on about? What's he yapping about? That's what the kids say now. Yap, uh, he's yap, he's a yapper. He's yapping away. Which I kind of find strangely endearing as much as it is a diss. But there's that old quote, um, you know, pe- you'll, people will tell you... I don't remember the actual quote, but people will tell you who you are and you've got to work out who you are before you're told who you are or something like that. I can't even remember who said it. And it's even been said in a million, in a million different ways and attributed to a million different people. But it's true, I love that line from True Detective that after all these years I know who I am and there's a victory in that. I love that Nick Pizzolatto, the writer, he wrote that when he was my age, we are both the same age, so he would have been 38 at the time. And so I remember following his work so religiously after watching the first season of True Detective. And yeah, I I read all his short stories I was wondering how how can he how does he have the amaz amazingness to say that at the age of thirty eight because at the time I was just coming into myself as I was just coming into myself but he had he was a showrunner for True, True Detective I read all the short stories I, I followed him I'd check out what he was doing like through through lockdowns he said get on to Jung's Red Book which Mum also loved. He said that will that shit will actually save us while we're going through some sort of spiritual warfare in lockdown. And after all these years, ten years later, Nick Pizzolotto followed me earlier this year on Instagram, just seeing one of my videos. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh my god, this that's just fucking made my year. <laughs> it made my year for the writer of first season of True Detective who wrote that line that I love. Um, followed me on Instagram and and." I, that's that spun me out and strangely that maybe true detective that first season did inspire me in some ways i loved matt mcconaughey's um don't know how you say his name that'll do his monologues his weird philosophical monologues that sort of always kind of poetic essayist weird shit to play to woody harrelson's straight straight detective there's also another quote i don't know who said it but something like um it's a fine line between crazy and genius. And I kind of feel like maybe some dumb part of me wanted to prove that I wasn't crazy, that, I, that I'm not genius either, but I, that I was definitely wasn't crazy and that I'd, I had something magic to offer the world as all, all of us artists want to bring to this, this strange world that's often just talked about as it's just a, a normal, unmagical world. 
been reading Chuck Palahniuk's book. He wrote The Fire Club, but he wrote something on on writing, and I was and he was talking about all these crazy stories of like dogs watching their owner die and then following something unseen from room to room and then out into the garden and just just crazy magical stories that the non-fiction true true stuff and he said something like they're the crazy beautiful stories that advertising doesn't want us to know because advertising wants to be the magical thing that sells us the sells us magic advertising wants the world to be a boring dumbass unmagical world so it can sell the magic that's what he was saying in this book that i've just finished and yeah there's there's something to that there's ma- there's magic everywhere and I love I love other magical people and I loved how art can connect us all together and that sort of shit. Anyway, anyway, I love if you left a review of my podcast on Spotify or Apple or wherever you're listening. It all helps as an independent artist.